Hi everybody, it's Sally from Sally Stampers. Thank you for joining me today. Today I'm bringing you a gorgeous project that um, I actually saw on Crafty Caroline Creates um, and hers was a beautiful um, wedding gift set um, but I wanted to make a Christmas gift set so um, it's the same idea that Caroline created but I've put my own spin on it and made uh, a Christmas version as I say um, and I've used my autumn winter favourite, Peaceful Noel, um, and if anybody um, is aware of my card kit, they'll know that this is the suite that I've used in my card kit as well this month. So hopefully um, anything that you have left over in your kit may go towards creating one of these. Now, I have done this in a two-part video simply because there's too much for me to do in one go. So today's video, I'm going to show you how to make this really lovely um box stroke folder and then on saturday i will show you how i've made the cards and tags that are inside um so just very briefly then i'm going to show you these are the little tags um really simple really easy to make um but beautiful <coughs> excuse me <coughs> i'm sure last year i had some wrapping paper that was this kind of color this lovely merry mellow color um and so I'm hoping that I can get some more this year and then I'm going to create my own tags and make a lot of these because they are just gorgeous. So those are my simple tags. Then there are some 3x3 three three note cards with the copper embossed in the centre there and just a little bit of stamping. And obviously we have the 3x3 three three envelopes as well. And then just at the back here are standard cards. Now I've put only put four in. There is room, even with my... Um, dimensionals etc you could possibly get another one in there so you may be able to get five if you didn't use dimensionals you'd probably get quite a few more in um, again quite a simple card if you again have seen my card kit for this month you'll see that this is a very similar design to the one that I used um, I have used the same um, card and pattern throughout just it, again it's easier when you're doing bulk just to repeat because you can just punch as many sprigs as you need and as many sentiment panels as you need etc so I did do them in bulk um, so those are the cards those are the tags and those are the little note cards and as I say all of these um, will be shown on Saturday and I'll link both the two videos and blog posts together so that you can look at one without having to search for the other um, but yeah I'm going to show you how to make this super cute little case today and it's really easy so let's just slide this but, <laughs> do you know I just did this and it went on like a dream isn't it always the way there we go so there we go my first box then so to start off with and make what I call the main folder you're going to need a sheet of cardstock that is 10 inches by six and a half inches and that's 26 centimeters by 16 and a half and I'm actually going to do all my scoring on my paper trimmer today um, I love my scoring board don't get me wrong it is fabulous um, but sometimes I think we forget how versatile our trimmer is um, and obviously we can score with this too and we can just get just as good um, a measurements on this so move my cutting blade because I seriously don't want to be cutting any of this now so on the long side then we're going to score at four and a half centimeter sorry four and a half inches and five and a half inches which is eleven and a half and fourteen and a half centimeters pop that to one side for our standard card pocket so that's the larger cards and this is how I've labeled them on my blog as well so that you can follow the measurements a bit easier uh, for your standard card pocket, you need a sheet of cardstock that is seven and a half inches by five and a half, and that's 19.5 by 14.5 centimeters. On the long side, we're going to score at half an inch, which I always do this way because it's easier. Um, so half an inch and seven. Let me open this. There's my seven which is one and a half and 18 centimeters and on the short side we're going to score at two and a half inches 
and three, which is six and a half and eight centimetres. Then we are going to do a three by three card pocket. And I always advise if you're going to do this like I am, label up your pieces because these two for the cards and the tags are very similar in size. They're not exact, they're very similar and I wouldn't want you to get mixed up. So your three by three card pocket, I'm just going to take that off for a moment. So this is four and a half by four and a quarter. So... Uh, which is 11 by 11.5 so on the long side which for us will be four and a half obviously 11.5 centimeters we're going to score at two and two and a half and then we're going to score the short side at a half and three and three quarters and in centimeters that will be the long side score at five and six and a half, at the short one and a half and nine and a half. I'm just going to pop that back on. And then finally for the tag pocket, you need a sheet of cardstock that is four and a half by three and a quarter, which is eleven and a half by eight and a half centimetres. We're going to score the long side at two inches and two and a half which is five centimeters and six and a half then we're going to rotate and score at half a cent sorry half an inch and two and three quarter Ooh, no that's not right yes I think it's three and three quarters let me just alter that because that's not going to be right otherwise Yes, that's better. Uh, and that is one and a half by seven. I will double check that, but that looks about right to me. So, then we just simply need to start folding and burnishing these score lines. Give this one really good burnish because obviously we need this to, to close nicely. So give that one... A nice fold and burnish and then likewise so we're just going to go through them all scoring the folding the score line sorry and this one I'm using here is Tranquil Tide the previous set that I made up was Merry Malo which I always have issues in pronouncing because I'm never sure if it's right or not okay I'm having issues because I don't think that is right. No, that's exactly the same size. So three by three is correct. Let me redo this tags because I'm not happy with that, that it's the right size. So I'm just gonna quickly grab some of my cardstock. So let's try again. So we need tags. out of the way four and a half by three and a quarter that's better move that out of the way so then we're going to score the long side at two and two and a half and the short side at one half and yes two and three quarters so I was right the first time that looks a lot better I'll rewrite that again that's better so um, tag pocket is four and a half by three and a quarter we're going to score the long side at two and two and a half the short side at half and two and three quarters so in centimeters it's eleven and a half by eight and a half we score at five and six and a half and then the short side one and a half and seven. I knew it didn't look right. I'd obviously just cut two pieces the same. So, as I was saying, beautiful, beautiful, Tranquil Tide, Merry Malo and the Copper. It's just my new favourite combination. I think it is just gorgeous. 
and I can't wait to see how this one turns out in Tranquil Tide. I'm hoping it will look just as nice. So we now have all of our, or shall I say our three pieces that look a little something like this and we obviously need to cut them and it's just this tiny little square here in the center of either side that you literally are just going to cut and let's cut some little wedges and we're going to do it on all three pieces on both sides so just cutting them down cutting the wedges that's that one and then just finishing off this way and then oops and these would make great gift sets to use on um, Christmas fairs, Christmas stalls, anything like that. I think these would sell a dream. Um, and, and again, like I said previously, um, I've used the same suite as my kit, my card kit. So you can always duplicate the, the card if you've got the stamp. Obviously, the majority of this will will work you just obviously need the cardstock and then all we need to do is add some adhesive to these and to one of the sides so I'm going to use my tear and tape um, just because it is a little quicker at this stage so I'm going to run it down the length of that side the length of this side and then I want to add, you don't have to do this, but I found it does help. And you'll see why in just a moment. Some little tiny pieces just on those tabs. Same again on here. So obviously, as you can see, you're just repeating the same thing with different sized pockets. And you could always adapt and alter yours to any anything you wanted really. If you wanted to do it as just cards and envelopes, large cards and envelopes, you could do one pouch in front of the other. Or you could do varying heights. Just spin these around, do these bits, doesn't take long really once you start and you know where you're at with it all. Okay, so that's that bit done. Right, so let's just stick all these together. So, and I I know that a lot of people when doing something like this would tuck the small bit, bit in first and then adhere those. Now that's fine and it works but for me it means that when you're putting a card inside if I sort of do it at that angle you're going to keep catching that and I find that frustrating or well I do I mean <laughs> I guess that's possibly just the way I am but I find that really irritating so the way I overcome that and this is why I've added a piece of adhesive onto here is because is by adhering this piece onto here and then obviously this is why I'm oh, sorry completely off camera I adhere this to the bottom here and that's why I've added another piece of um, adhesive onto there because then when I fold this over in place it's going to stick Whereas if I didn't have adhesive on that little tab, this would be flapping, which I can't be doing with. And that's so that's why I do it this way. I just think that if that little bit's inside, you're going to keep catching it and it's going to get damaged or, um, you know, it may cause the, the box corner to, to break. So I just do it this way. And to be fair, it's easy as well because the, the bottom of here 
literally sits in that fold so you're going to get a nice straight fold anyway so that's that bit my joins are here and here so this will be the back so I'm going to run tear and tape across the back here just you could obviously use wet glue here if you're happy for and you have time for it to sit and dry obviously I don't because I think you'd get very frustrated with me sitting waiting for glue to dry and we just twiddled our thumbs so that's that piece done and then we're going to do exactly the same here I can take this off now because I know which one's which so again same here I'm just going to take these backings off oops And then just simply took that one onto there and that one onto there. And hopefully you can also see now why I decided not to do the cards as well as making this because like we're at 15 minutes already and you would just be falling asleep. So took that one on and then that one. And then again with that be in the back. Let's pop some tear and tape on. Oh, and last but not least, last little one. And we just need a little bit of tear and tape on these. Okay, let's get rid of that. So we now just need to put it all together and decorate our base. So I'm going to decorate this bit first. So I'm back in with my gorgeous, gorgeous ribbon, um, which actually realised that when I did this one, as you will notice, and it is all a learning curve, isn't it? I foolishly put the join of the ribbon there and it just dawned on me that I should have put it here so that it was behind that. So that's what I'm going to do this time. So just for getting the right length, so I need it to be there. And then I'm just again back in with my beautiful tear and tape, which I adore. Oh, just look how that falls. Isn't it so pretty? Right. Getting obsessed with ribbon. And when you do put your tear and tape on, try, I'm obviously doing this quite fast, but try and just make sure, look, that you don't get kinks in your ribbon. Because <laughs> it will show up on the box. I'm not too concerned. I'm hoping that's going to fall on an edge. So, I'm simply going to take all of it off which is being a bit crazy and then I want to start oh my goodness me don't stick to me I'm going to start it about there and then lay it down I'll trust that to be there look <laughs> fold it over and then, and the other good thing about doing it this way is that if, like me, you get a bit of a frayed end, you're not going to see it because it's going to be under that label. So there's my ribbon, not very straight, unfortunately. That one did much better. And then I just simply needed, which I haven't got out, clearly not organised, am I? Luckily, it's relatively easy to get to. I have some copper foil sheet here and I'm using the two and a quarter circle punch just to get a nice circle of that and then I need my two inch circle punch 
and some Whisper White. So, what I next need to do is my stamping. Um, fill the season with happiness. And again, you'll notice on this one that I did two colours. Now, actually, this is actually shaded spruce because I completely messed up my colours when I was doing it. But what I found was that this is pretty much, let me do it over the ink pad and then you can see, this is pretty much a straight line here and here. So you can actually ink, so I did the very top line, there you go, you can see there, I've already inked that fill the season and then to do the, the word with, let me zoom in and you can hopefully see what I'm doing. I'm actually going to use the corner of my ink pad to do the word with and then when I'm happy that I've got enough ink on I'm going to go back and just restamp that fill the season so I've now just got that bit done and then I'm just going to stamp it I've missed the corner of the H slightly but I'm not overly concerned right give that a good clean I'm not going to shut that up actually because we'll need it in a moment now I need my tranquil tide now on here you need to make sure that your stamp is clean and we're going to do exactly the same with the word happiness so again I'm going upside down inking the whole of the word and you can't even see <laughs> inking the whole of the word on the edge of the ink pad and then the dot for the I and the H is being done on the corner and so again you can see I now have the word happiness so let's zoom back out and then it's simply a case of lining this up excuse my head while I just get in and make sure line it up with the bit that you've already stamped and you get your two-tone now you can do it with markers you can't do it with the blends but as I say, you can do it with the markers and you do get that really pretty effect. So I'm going to use my two inch circle punch now just to punch that out. And then I actually want to just add some holly berries to the bottom. But I've punched it out so that I can get them at the right place. So I'm going to, oops, I'll grab my littles instead. So there's my berries. There's my holly leaf. Oh, I need another one actually. Because I didn't realise that I did the outlines too. So, tranquil tide, holly berry, holly leaf, sorry, outline that I'm just stamping at the bottom there. And then the infill that I'm going to stamp off and just fill in that leaf. Fabulous. Move those. Let's close that. Merry Malo. So again doing the outline of the berries. Stamp and scrub is just ideal for these situations. And then, oh heck, I need to make sure I get this lined up the right way. I love the texture as well on these. I'll show you in just a moment. Let's close that up out of the way. Yes, look, I'm hoping you can get up on focus. Yeah, the, the texture here on the um, infill, if you like, of the holly berry and the um, leaves. I just love it. Oh my goodness, you can see all the mess now. Right, so that's that bit done. I've got ink on my fingers and on the edge of there. Fabulous. So just a little bit of snail to stick on there so I'm happy with that apart from my gunky fingers all over it and then I'm using oh my days how gorgeous is this as you can see I've used a ton of it already so I need red gold and green or should I say Mary Malo tranquil tide and copper and I need my sprig punch and I literally want one of each. So 
sadly my poor little dog here in the window doesn't like the punch she just sits looking at me in disgust <laughs> sorry Daisy that's it last one she really doesn't I don't know why I suppose it's just the noise but she just doesn't like it so those are my fabulous sprigs I'm literally going to grab some fabulous glue dots and put one on the back of each one and then where's my piercing tool there it is get rid of that I need some dimensionals on here so I need one at the bottom I'm just going to go one either side of the top there and then I'm just going to simply use this as a bit of a placement as to where my sprigs will sit and I didn't intentionally do red, amber, green but that's the way that they have <laughs> gone on and then obviously just add these to the front So that's that part. So there's the front done and decorated, all glittery and shiny. And then you obviously need to add your compartments. So largest one first. Obvious, I know. Oh, heavens, why have I gone out of focus? Come on. Come on, come on. Oh, my days, why is this not focusing? There we go, there's a crazy button that says focus on the side. Um, yes, common sense I know. Um, make sure the top is at the top when you stick this on. I'm only going by my errors. So <laughs> if I've made them, there's a chance somebody else will. So this one, obviously, make sure that your bottom lines up with the edge here. Um, it, it is a bit of a sort of put one corner on Make sure your edge is lined up and then stick the rest on. And then obviously you can just pop your hand inside just to press down that tear and tape. Then next up is the 3x3 three three card pocket. And I guess this doesn't matter if you put these on the opposite way to me. You know, if you have your tags to the left and your little cards to the right, it doesn't matter. And I just simply again lined it up with the bottom here, but just made sure, well, just went in just a fraction here. And press that down again on the inside. And then the last one is the tags. Oh, goodness, come on. I'm going to seriously have to clean my desk before I do any more because it is a mess. And then this one, again, you can either put these up together, leave a small gap. I'm just going to leave a small gap. Again, lined up with the bottom here. And there it is. So, oops, that's not so clever. And then obviously, if you want to, you can use some more gorgeous ribbon to make your belly band. Let's not waste it because we don't need too much. So I'm going to go about there. I mean, you could make your band out of cardstock if you wanted to and decorated it however you liked. Um, I've just simply used the ribbon because it's pretty. I love it and I want to show everybody it. Get out. Oh, isn't that always the way? Anyway, <laughs> there's my bow. So there's my tranquil tide one. And then here is my Merry Malo. And pop back on Saturday and I will show you the cards and tags that I have made. And they are really simple to make. But those are my... Christmas card gift boxes or gift sets. Hope you've enjoyed it. Sorry it's taken so long, but hopefully it's worthwhile. Hope to see you on Saturday for the cards and tags. Have a great day. Bye.